Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel with your host, ex Big Four Auditor, ex Carl Leifer, and current digital investor and homeowner and whatever other label you want to slap on me. But today we are going to dive deep into what is going on with my M1 Finance portfolio after the transformation, after I move all these stocks into my M1 Finance portfolio, and also the whole transfer process and like a little thoughts about dividend investing. So let's get started without further ado. So this is my M1 Finance portfolio. Currently, it's at $19,394.21. And I am thinking about pouring more money into this portfolio, especially because now I have even more revenue streams. Um, I have 13 income streams that are constantly producing me more money that I will dive deeper into in a separate video. But um, I don't like letting my money sit in those low yield savings account anymore, especially because the feds cut their rates again. So um, with an even lower interest rate, it just doesn't make sense for me to let those money sit even in my so-called high yield savings account because right now it only produces like in the low one point something percentage. No longer 1.7 for my wealth front account. So that's why I really want to take advantage of this opportunity and buy into these like discounts. So you can see right here, I named this Cherry's Passive Income because I do want to make this into my main source of passive income one day when I want to retire or when I just want to do something creative, if I just want to create without the, the burden of making money. And so if you click into here or tap into here, you can see there are different sectors. I have consumer, healthcare, tech, real estate, telecom, finance, utilities, and bonds. And with like recent market volatility, you can still see like I am still up still up by 0.71%, even though this is not accurate at all. So you can see right here, my starting value is $18,271.59, which is not accurate. And I really want them to fix this because I really want to see the actual performance of my portfolio. But it's showing that I started this portfolio March 3rd, 2020, which is also not true because if you follow my channel, if you follow my dividend investing journey, you'll know that I had this portfolio ever since September of 2019. So this stat over here is also not right. And the net cash flow is also not right. I think the $1,000 is just ever since March 3rd, 2020, I have $1,000. And then my market gains is 122 and 55 cents since March 3rd. So like all, all these percentage are not right, but I just wanna show you what is in my pie because I received a comment saying that my pie is not accurate in terms of the link, I assume. So I wanna show you like, what does my pie really look like? So when you tap into here, I have different sectors. I have consumer, healthcare, tech, real estate, telecom, finance, utilities, and bonds. And one thing to clarify is that yes, in the beginning, I did adopt Joseph Carlson's pie uh, just to have like a basis cause I kind of got lazy, but I did some major changes. So right now our pies look really different and I am not trying to like copy his pie exactly right now because I believe in my own abilities to stock pick and choose the ones that I personally believe in. So you can see like even in terms of the sector, sector dividing is also very different. So I think Joseph Carlson probably has bonds as his biggest section, like biggest sector and I have consumer and my bonds is my smallest right now. So if you click into consumer, you can see I have 3M, Coca-Cola, Estee Lauder, Disney, Starbucks, Tapestry, Costco, Target, and Nike. And if you wanna know why I buy all these companies in particular, you can check out one stock analysis video, the first one that I did for CCL, and that is what I base off of. So I do that analysis first. That is like my numbers analysis. I always like to do my numbers analysis first to know if this is like a logical thing to pursue. And then I do the, uh, what do you call it? I do the quality, like the qual qualification, qualification? quality analysis. So so that is the quantity. And then I do the quality analysis in terms of how I feel about this company, how I feel about management. I read the articles, I listen to the CEO interviews and whatnot. So that is the part two. But part one is always about numbers because as an accountant, I'm a numbers person. I like to look at the numbers first. I like to look at the financial statements first. I like to look at the things that have like solid evidence. Whereas for interviews or for the articles, those can be very biased and those can be very opinionated. So I tell to leave that to the second step. So over here, you can see all these different companies that are within consumer. And I like to divide them by industries because I feel like that helps me become more organized and that also makes my overall like pie look nicer. So over here, I have healthcare, I have Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, MDT, MRK, ABBV, Amgen, and United Health Group. And you can see healthcare is actually doing pretty well in this like very volatile market. And then you can uh, see over here, I have some tech stocks. Tech, I was, I was very, very bullish about in the 
later, like in the last half of 2019. And I was also very bullish about tech in the beginning of 2020, but because you know my personality, I'm a pretty risk averse person. And when I smell any blood, um, when I sense any like major volatility, I try to lower my dependence on tech because yes, I'm bullish about tech, but I'm also not confident in my like little fragile heart. I don't want my heart to get scared too much of the market volatility. So I lower the percentage of tech. I still have tech, I did not sell anything, but I'm just not pouring any new money into tech. So as you can see, I currently have Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, Visa, and Alteryx. And you probably know I also have a lot of tech stocks in my Robinhood portfolio. So that is where I focus more my attention on instead of my M1 Finance portfolio when it's more dividend investing focused. My Robinhood portfolio is more growth focused is where I bought a bunch of uh, Facebook. I bought like 20,000 worth of Facebook over there in my Robinhood portfolio. And so that's how I kind of differentiate between the two. And for my M1 Finance portfolio, I just really want to focus on dividend investing for the time being. And over here, you can see I have real estate. Real estate is also another part that I'm very bullish about. If I had all the money in the world, I'll buy a lot of physical real estate. But because it's kind of hard to get like down payment, especially for a place here in West LA, which is where I live, I kind of want to take it slow and take the easier steps to buy into these real estate investment trust. And so you can see over here, I have a bunch of reads. I have APLE and then I also have LTC. I have uh, Realty Income, Simon Property Group, NRZ, Wall Tower, Store Capital, and Stack Industrial. So I have all these like real estate related stocks, dividend paying stocks and REITs in this sector. And over here, I also have Telecom and Telecom it is super simple. I only have two stocks in here and can you guess which ones? <laughs> Drum roll. <laughs> It is AT&T and Verizon. So I have a lot of AT&T, very overfunded right now. I have like 91.6% over 60% for this sector because I imported a lot of AT&T stocks from my Robinhood portfolio to my M1 Finance portfolio. That is why this is so overfunded. But um, I'm just going to let my new money feed into Verizon more so it can eventually balance out a little more. I am not going to hit that rebalance button because that can cause a lot of tax implication and I don't want to pay more taxes unnecessarily, especially as an accountant. I'm very conscious about tax and a lot of the decisions I make in my life are revolving around tax. And so this is something that I'm very conscious about. That's why no rebalance for me right now. And then there's also finance. So finance, you can see I have a couple stocks in here. Probably a lot of these you're familiar with. I have Bank of America, I have JP Morgan and Chase, and then there's Main Street Capital, Affleck, Royal Bank of Canada, TD, T Row, and Wells Fargo. So some of, I wanna say, oh, actually all of these finance related stocks are getting hit big. And some people might wanna pour more money into these stocks. Of course, it depends on your own personal preference. I am just letting it flow. What I'm doing is just auto investing my money into these different sectors according to the allocations. So let's say because this went down by almost 6%, this sector went down by almost 6%. As I pour money in, it will just automatically reallocate more money from my like new money into these lower percentages. And so I will automatically be able to buy more stocks that are cheaper, that are um, on discount, on um, like more of a discount, if that makes any sense. I feel like I'm not explaining this right. Okay, just think of it like this. Here, here is, um, how should I say this? Here, here, here is a concrete road, right? Concrete road, and then some of the places have bumps, some of their, some of the places have dips. And so the dips are the stocks that have discounts, right? And then the bumps are the stocks that are overfunded. So your money is like rain, your rain raining down, right? And then, when there's dips, of course the rain will land on the dips first to fill the dips. And then the bumps, it's not gonna fill the bumps because these are higher, right? So that, that is how your M1 Finance portfolio works. It will fill your dips first. It will fill the ones that are highly discounted. It will fill the ones that are red. It will fill the ones that have like the lower percentage. And then it will slowly be all filled up and it will become flat because as you fill more water, water doesn't become bumpy, water's just flat when there's no wind. So water's just flat and then you can just see this is like higher and then this is like lower and then this is your new money, that is water. And then maybe you can add some concrete powder into it to make it like actual concrete. Just like use your imagination, it's hard for me to explain. But I'm a very like imagery driven person. I hope that helped, please let me know if that helped. And then 
That was my finance sector. And then here's my utility sector, which I have Dominion Energy, Southern Company, Duke Energy, and Next Era Energy. So these are all my energy companies. And right now it's doing pretty good. It's up by 3.09%. But I personally don't care too, too much about energy. I should probably do more research like about this energy sector. But honestly, how I really look at stocks, I don't care. <laughs> this is really bad, but I don't care too much about how the numbers are really gonna work because I feel like in this world, we are already doing a lot of things that we don't like just for the sake of it. Like we might be going to school, but we don't like it. We might be going to our jobs, but, but we don't like it. We're already doing a lot of things against our will. So when it comes to investing, when something that you can really, really design according to what you enjoy, I just tend to like to design it around my personal preference. Since I like reading about tech, I really wanna be bullish about tech because I enjoy reading about tech. I enjoy learning about social media. I enjoy reading about like online advertising and all that. That is something that I'm passionate about, that I enjoy, that I will very gladly enjoy my lovely Sunday afternoon like researching about those stuff. So since I really enjoy it that much, I'm going to naturally put more um, of my money into the things that I actually enjoy doing. And so this is probably against a lot of other investors that are super logical, that are just like calculating, let me find the best investment ever regardless of what I want. But I'm kind of, I take a more human approach on this and I really care about what I personally want to learn about. And as you can see, even though my utilities are doing pretty well with like a 3% um, increase, I am still not increasing the allocation of this just because I'm not that interested in learning more about energy and reading articles during like my lovely Sunday afternoon. And that's just my thought process at this point of my life. No guarantees that maybe 30 years from now, Cherry will still think the same way. But right now I just wanna take a more human approach because as human beings, we're already doing a lot of things that are not what we would rather do. And so might as well, like for a place, so free in this investing world you can design exactly what you want your portfolio to look like you can buy exactly which companies you want to buy into might as well make it more you make it more catered to what you want in life and so that is my utilities and then here's my bonds bonds is my least favorite one because i'm just not a bond person um not now maybe later not now not before and so I have SPHD, I have LQD. SPHD technically shouldn't be here because this is just like an index fund, but I just put it in here because I don't know where else I can put it and I don't wanna create another slice for it just for SPHD. So I just put it here even though it has nothing to do with bonds. And then I have my LQD, uh, BNDX, IEF and IEI. And I don't know why every time when it comes to bonds, like so hard to scroll and then SHY. So these are my bonds. I don't enjoy reading about bonds. Also, that's why it is like one of the smallest allocation, but I understand there's a need for diversification and also like just being able to learn about the investments even if you're not very interested in. So I will still do my basic analysis in these different sectors. It's just that I tend to put more emphasis and more of my money in the places that I actually wanna learn about, such as consumer, healthcare, tech real estate. So these four are my biggest allocations so far. And you can see for real estate, I really want to pour even more money, like even more than tech. Right now it's only 9.2% over the 15% that I want to allocate. So this is going to change as I pour more money and yeah, more rain, water or money into my concrete and it's going to fill this dip and make it flat again, make it even again. So that is my M1 Finance portfolio. I really hope that you can find some insight in terms of my investing strategy and also what stocks I buy. Of course, the reason why I'm making these videos is not to tell you exactly what you need to buy. I really hate those like clickbaity titles and be like, must buy these five stocks. If you don't buy, you miss out. Like I, I know this is the overall trend with the investing world and for various reasons, mostly because they wanna make money and if they buy certain stocks and they tell other people to buy, that's gonna drive the stock price up and that is for their advantage. Like I understand that, but I really don't like that part of the investing world. I feel like it's it's too stimulating, I feel like, and I don't want my videos to be so stimulating and <laughs> it sounds so bad, but I just don't wanna overly push people to change their investing strategy or change their stocks, stock picks just because of my personal opinion. I don't want to do that. I really want you to be able to make your own decisions. Even for my one-on-one -on -one coaching client, I never tell them this is exactly what you need to buy. You should definitely follow my investing uh, guide and follow all the stocks that I buy. Like I never tell that to my one-on-one -on -one clients because I don't personally like that about myself. I, because I don't personally like it when people do that to
to me, I really don't enjoy reading the articles that are like, oh, these five stocks are must buy for 2020 or in February 2019, if you don't buy these stocks, you miss out. I really don't like titles like this and I feel like I don't learn anything if I just blindly follow other people's stock picks. That's just my own personal opinion, but please let me know if you enjoy content like this where I'm just like talking about my portfolio and my growth and my decision making and why I made these decisions. I just feel like talking about the why is more helpful than just talking about your stock picks, if that makes any sense. But let me know, let me know. I'm open to any opinion that you have and as a video creator, a lot of times we are just so stuck in our little little world, little bubble. And we're just like, yeah, I'm, I'm creating and I'm just taking all these like ideas and information from my own head. But I think it's also like equally important, if not more important to listen to others and see what your viewers have to say. So I'm open to your feedback and I will see you in my tutorial, M1 Finance tutorial because I know there is definitely a learning curve. Using M1 Finance is not the same as using Robinhood or any other brokerage. So definitely there's a learning curve learning about how to use M1 Finance, especially like on your phone, because as you know, all of us have phones now and it's just so convenient to do all your investments on your phone without having to jump in front of a laptop or a computer. And so in this video, you will see exactly how I use M1 Finance to its greatest potential. And I will see you over there.